I'm Jim Masterson and the method of body work that I use is called the Masterson method so I'll be talking about uh, the method, specific method that I use and teach and also I'll be talking about um, the horse's body and how performance affects the horse's body and why they can use body work. So I wanted to get a little information on Luna here. Do you want to tell me about her? This is uh, Luna. She's been with the City of Madison Police Department uh, since she was five. Uh, she was uh, donated to us by a woman named Brandy Riley up in uh, Colorado. She liked what she saw when she came and saw us do a demo and some training. What, what's her job like? Well, uh, her job, we predominantly will patrol the entertainment district downtown Madison. So she spends a lot of time on asphalt and concrete. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also will patrol parks and bike paths, um, but uh, our riding schedule, we work an eight-hour shift, and we will usually be riding about six of those hours, give or take. Now, that's broken up into about three-hour segments. We are fairly, uh, we're, we like to give them a break mid-shift so they can get food and water yeah. and such. Um, but as far as the surface that she'll be riding on will be predominantly asphalt and concrete. Yeah. And we do, uh, we do keep them barefoot. We don't have metal shoes on them. She's wearing easy boots right now. That's uh, occasionally if we need to protect the sole, we'll use mm -hmm. the easy boot system. But yeah. uh, we've had very good results with just keeping them uh, barefoot. Yeah, you ride on a lot of different surfaces and it's better to have, I mean, barefoot seems to cope with all the different, a lot of different surfaces as well, right? pavement, whether it's pavement, dirt, uh, if you ever go to the beach, maybe sand. <laughs> uh, absolutely. We've, uh, we've also been on cases where we had to look for missing people and, um, you know, I've ridden her on, uh, on the railroad beds and if you've ever been on, walked on railroad beds, uh, you know even that very crazy gravel and iron and creosote um, and she has rock solid feet. She, we've never had any real issues with uh, riding barefoot on that. Right. And you also said she's somewhat of a food critic. <laughs> Uh, yes, I would say that she is very motivated for food. Um, we try to limit that to training environments, girl, okay. Um, but, uh, you know, when we're riding on State Street and the outdoor restaurants, we're passing by the tables, she's always very interested in seeing what uh, might be out on the table as well. Yeah. Her, her, her next job might, job might be with the health department, maybe. <laughs> All right, well, thanks. We're going to start with a technique called the bladder meridian technique. That's a very soft, gentle technique that enables us to, one, start to learn to be able to read this horse. He'll start telling us where he has tension in his body. Uh, two, he'll start to release the tension in his body. And three, it's going to make a connection between us as the human and the horse that kind of bypasses that bracing survival response. Now, how you start this, me this method with the bladder meridian technique is kind of like Becky's doing with Luna. And Mary, are you doing some bladder meridian down there with Scooter? This is Scooter. Scooter's a, an endurance Arabian. The way you start this bottom meridian technique, which you can do at home, you, these are techniques you can go home and do, is you start up behind the pole and you slowly, using air gap pressure, go down the top line of the neck and follow the bladder meridian and watch for responses from the horse. If, you, if you're going down and the horse blinks or twitches and you think it may be because of what you're doing, you'll stop and stay there and wait just the, the doing air gap pressure, just the heat of your hand will send circulation to that area and the horse will start to relax it and when they release enough tension they'll do another response, a larger one such as lick and chew. Now horses always blink, they always lick and chew, they always often yawn. The key here is the correlation between what you're doing and the horse is doing. If you go over a spot and the horse blinks, if you're not sure if the horse was blinking because of what you're doing or was blinking because of something else, go over that spot again. Slowly, if you get a blink at the same spot, it means something. That's where the communication comes in. It's the correlation between what you're doing and what the horse is doing. The hard part for humans is the waiting and the light pressure and not trying to do something. Because we're programmed to, when we find a problem, to do something about it. We're programmed to push, to rub, to, to expect something to happen. You have to th kind of throw away the clock and wait and allow the horse's body and nervous system to release the tension. And what, what's happening, 
going, she's starting to relax her leg back here. What's happening is when you find some discomfort in the horse, if you push on it, the horse braces against it. If you back off, the horse releases it. The horse's nervous system will release it. So you're basically bringing the horse's awareness to an area where there's some tension in a way that they can't brace against it. They can't brace against nothing. They can't brace against air gap. So you're bringing their awareness there and their nervous system will start to send circulation there which will start to relax that area. So you can see how anybody can do this. You just have to learn to slow down and back off and not try to get something done. Allow the horse to release for this particular technique. She is a little bit, you know, when I see in her, there's a little internal fidgeting here. Her ears are a little bit back. He, she, he's, uh, Becky's down there near her hocks and she may be a little uncomfortable there and so she's a little, that little discomfort is a little bit of fidgeting. So you need to recognize that fidgeting is the horse a little bit uncomfortable with this, with you finding its stuff and with the release uh, process. Does that make sense so far? So, that's the bladder meridian technique. It's very simple, it's very easy, and it demonstrates how this works. And it also, it, it's uh, something you could do to help your horse. You start to see where the horse is sore. You start to see, see patterns that develop that might point to what's creating it. Because as tension patterns develop in the body, once you, you have more experience with this, they start to correlate with what might be creating them. Basically, to get a connection going with your horse, there she's starting to, to sneeze and snort a little, it gets a connection going with your horse so that you're both on the same page. Page.